Good morning. Uh, I welcome you to this session. We will continue uh, the discussion on normal shocks. So, last class, uh, actually, we were discussing that for a shock, if we know the properties at the upstream of the shock, we are interested to know the properties at the downstream section. That means, for a given flow properties at the upstream of the shock, what are the flow properties after the shock waves? That means, across the shock waves, there is a change in flow properties and we are interested to find that. So, let us continue the discussions in this way that uh, let uh, this is the duct uh, and let this is there is a shock here, a shock wave and if the upstream section is designated by x with all given properties that mac sorry m a x p x rho x t x, we are interested in all those properties across the shock. So, last class we uh, derived one very important relation relating to the first the Mach number after the shock, downstream of the shock and we probably if you recall, we get two solutions from a quadratic equation connecting the Mach number at the section y after the shock and the before the shock that means m a y and m a x and we found one trivial solution that is m a y is m a x that is equality. Another one is the which is the possible solutions that m a y square in this way can be written as and it is very simple from that equation 2 by gamma minus 1 by 2 by gamma by gamma minus 1 m a x square minus 1. So, this is the relationship. That means, if we know a value of m a x, that means the Mach number at the upstream of the shock, then the downstream of the shock, we get the Mach number which is given by this. After that, what we was discussing is the non-dimensional of just for the moment, we come to a different uh, aspect that non-dimensionalization of velocity non-dimensionalization of velocity in compressible flow. Now, the velocity in compressible flow is non-dimensionalized by three reference velocity. Now, here one very pertinent question comes that this V by A, the Mach number at any section is itself a dimensionless parameter, but this cannot be used as a dimensionless velocity. This is because a change in Mach number implies both in change in V and A. This is because when the flow changes from section to section, the flow velocity along with that the velocity of the sound also changes because the state properties change. So, therefore, Mach number cannot be used in as a dimensionless or non-dimensional flow velocity because the reference value A which is used in the denominator here by its definition also change with the change in V. So, therefore, three reference velocities, actually this was discussed in our last class also, but I feel that I was little fast, so there were some confusions, so that is why you want to repeat it again. So, there are three reference velocities used in this connection, one is the maximum velocity, one is the maximum velocity, maximum velocity is given by root over 2 C p into T 0. You know relating to stagnation condition in an isentropic flow, if we write the energy equation h plus v square by 2 is equal to h 0, stagnation state and any other state given by velocity v. And for a perfect gas C p by C p t that h is C p t is equal to C p t 0, you know that. So, in general v is equal to root over 2 C p for any adiabatic flow it is the equation like that. So, the maximum velocity by theory comes when t is equal to 0, this hypothetical case. So, this a theoretical velocity can be used as the maximum velocity. Another one is the, this is number 1. Number 2 is the acoustic velocity A at the stagnation condition. This is given by gamma r t 0. Well, Another one is the acoustic velocity at the critical condition A star, which is given as gamma r t star. Now, 
Usually in compressible flow, the velocity is dimensional, non-dimensionalized or is made dimensionless by use of this velocity as the reference velocity. It is the velocity of sound at the critical condition, gamma r t dash, t star. Now, if we use this v with a star, the ratio of the flow velocity to the a star. So, a star has a unique value in a particular flow condition. It does not change from section to section. It has a unique value. That is the value of velocity of sound at the critical condition. This is defined as the m a star. So, confusion here was the, that the last class, the asterisk or the star is used for all properties at the critical condition. For example, by P star we mean the pressure at the critical condition. By T star we mean the pressure temperature at the critical condition. By rho star we mean the density at the critical condition. Similarly, A star used here mean, means the sound velocity at the critical condition. That means it is nothing but root over gamma R T star in case of perfect gap. But this critical condition is defined when the velocity is equal to the velocity of the sound flow velocity. That means V star, the flow velocity at the critical condition is A star. So, therefore, M A at the critical condition is 1, but we do not use the symbol M A star to denote the Mach number at the critical condition. Rather, M A star, there may be a confusion, the symbol, this is the convention, M A star is used to denote the dimensionless velocity V by A star. So, M A star is not the Mach number at the critical condition because this cannot be used as m star because this is a unique and this is the value of this is 1 at the critical condition. So, we take the critical condition as defined by m is equal to 1 when the flow velocity is equal to velocity of sound. But m star is not the critical Mach number at the critical section, it is v by a star. Now, from a simple energy equation, if I write the energy equation with at any section given by the velocity v and the critical section, we can write h star plus v star square by 2, all right. Now, h can be written again C p t plus v square by 2 is equal to C p t star plus v star square by 2. Now, what is C p? C p t, C p t here we can write C p t is equal to gamma by gamma minus 1 r t. So, this is nothing but a square. So, a square by gamma minus 1. So, if I substitute this here, we get a square by gamma minus 1 plus v square by 2 is equal to. Similarly, this will be a star square by gamma minus 1 plus v star square by 2. Now, I write this first. So, v square by 2 plus a square by gamma minus 1. Now, v star is a star that is true at the critical condition. So, this can be written as if I take this common. So, 2 gamma minus 1 gamma plus 1 okay, into a star square. Now, if I divide by a star square this equation left hand side and right hand side, we get m a star square by 2 v by a star by definition is m a star plus 1 by gamma minus 1 a square by a star square is equal to gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1. All right. Now, A by A star can be replaced like that. By definition, what is A? A means V by A. That means A is V by A. And A may star is, that is the dimensionless velocity. Mach number is also a dimensionless quantity containing velocity, but the flow velocity and the sound velocity, but here it is the flow velocity and a reference velocity which is a sound velocity at a particular condition. So, that is the difference. Here both the quantities change with the flow, but here only the flow velocity change and this is being normalized with a reference quantity at the denominator. This is the difference. So, therefore, one can write A by A star 
a by a star is equal to m a star by m a. That means, we divide this by this a by a star. So, if I substitute this a by a star in terms of m a star by m a, we get an equation, this is this, we get an equation connecting m a and m a star, all right, m a and m a star. Let me write this, if we write this, we get an equation, can you see that? Okay. So, we can write an equation m a star square by 2 plus 1 by gamma minus 1, a by a star means m a star square by m a square, okay, is gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma minus 1. m a star by m a is a by a star, so a by a star square is m a star square. That means, this equation now can be expressed in two fashion. One is that m a as a function of m a star, very simple one can do or m a star as a function of m a, either of these two. If it is written, you will get the most important one is m a star square, m a square, m a as a function of m a star, 2 by gamma plus 1 m a star square divided by 1 minus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 m a star square. You do not have to remember all this formula, you have to know the logic and the steps through which it is they are being deduced. Similarly, one can express m a star in terms of m a as gamma plus 1 by 2 m a square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a square. Now, out of these two, this one is used, this is very important that Mach number is uh, Mach number is expressed in terms of the, the dimensionless velocity m a star. Now, if we use this in the earlier one, now we stopped here. Now, if I express m a y in terms of m a y star and m a x in terms of m a x star, what we get? Now, before that you see that this is the expression. Well, no, this is not the thing where I did it. Sorry, I, th I think we should concentrate here, otherwise you will be in trouble. So, m a y, these are the two solutions we get, we got. m a y in terms of m a x. Now, here one thing is sure that if m a x is greater than 1, we already uh, recognized that the shock takes place when the upstream condition is supersonic. That means, in a supersonic flow. Then from this equation one can prove that when simple mathematics can uh, prove this that when m a x is greater than 1, m a y will be less than 1 with feasible values of gamma between 1.67. As you know the gamma for compressible fluids that gases varies between 1 is the absolute minimum and 1.67 is the maximum one for all polyatomic gases. So, taking any representative value between that, it can be proved that when m a x is greater than 1 m a, that means the shock changes a supersonic flow to subsonic flow. This will be more clear if we express this Mach number at the two section in terms of the m star, that means dimensionless velocity. That means by the use of this equation, the equation which we just is by the use of this equation, that means m a y, m a, that means the m a y or m a x whatever you tell, that means the Mach number in terms of the corresponding m a star. If we do that, then we will get the relationship like that m a y star, so this is a very simple relationship is equal to 1. That means, here it is obvious that the gamma factor is not there. So, when m a star m a x star is greater than 1, that means supersonic m a y star is less than 1. That means, supersonic to subsonic. Okay. Now, there are certain routine calculations for the 
pressure values. Now, we are interested with temperature and pressure. That means our basic motto is again to find out all the quantities after the shock. Quantities are temperature, pressure, density, rho y. These are the main flow properties or the state points. So, this we will calculate. How we will calculate? If you remember the temperature ratio, now it is very simple. When we have already derived the relationship between M A Y and M A X. Now, if we can write or we recall the relationship between T Y and T X in an isentropic flow for a perfect gas, it will be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M A X square plus divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2. We deduce it with the help of the relationship between the stagnation properties and the local properties that is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a square. So, logic is like that and this was derived from starting from the basic energy equation for an adiabatic flow and considering the flow is inviscid and using the perfect gas as the ideal gases as the uh, working fluid. Well, so here if we use m a y if we just uh, here, sorry, here m a y in terms of m a x, then we get a relationship like this, which is a big one. You do not have to remember, again I am telling just the logical step you have to know. Let me write 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x a square into 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 m a x a square minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 whole square divided by 2 gamma minus 1. So, objective is that when we know the property at the upstream of the shock by the m a x, then we can find out the temperature ratio. That means, knowing T x and m a x, we can find out the T y. That means, the temperature after the shock. That means, the temperature ratio T y to T x is expressed in terms of m a x. With the same philosophy, the pressure ratios are expressed in terms of the Mach number as a function of m a x. The procedure is like that. If we recall the most simple ratios of P y by P x, which was derived by the exploitation of the impulse function, equality of the impulse function, which sorry f y better to write f y is f x which was derived with the use of momentum equation with the use of momentum equation equation of motion then probably if you recall this was gamma m a x a square 1 plus these deductions are very simple. So, only thing is that you will have to know the logic that this is from this. So, simply again the substituting m a y in terms of m a x that means the same equation m a y in terms of m a x we can derive the p y to p x p y by p x is equal to 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m a x a square minus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1. Now, here one interesting thing you can immediately prove you can immediately prove that for any value of gamma greater than 1, if m a x is greater than 1, p y by p x is also greater than 1. This can be proved immediately. That means, this quantity is greater than 1 provided m a x is greater than 1 and gamma is greater than 1. This can be proved easily because if you subtract minus 1 from here, then you will see that 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 will be thing. That means, if you subtract minus 1, it will that means, p y by p x minus 1 is a simple thing that you can do 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 into m a x a square minus 1. That means, for any value of m a x a square greater than 1, so this is positive. That means, p y by p x is greater than 1. So, this can be proved. This is a very important conclusion that means, after the shock, the flow reaches subsonic that means, the flow is decelerated and at the same time the pressure is increased that means, P y is greater than P x. Okay. 
So, this is the ratio. Then again, these are the routine affair that rho y by rho x as a function of m x. Very simple thing. So, rho y by rho x, we have already found out the function that p y by p x as a function of m x is known. Similarly, we have found out t y by t x. So, if we can express rho y by rho x by these two ratios from the equation of state, we can find it. We know that p is equal to rho r t. So, rho y by rho x is p y by p x into t x by t y. So, t x by t y as a function, we know t y by t x. Similarly, this as a function of m a x we know. So, we can find out rho y by rho x. So, similar way we can find out v y by v x. v y by v x from the continuity is rho x by rho y. That means rho y by rho x means the reverse v x by v y. So, this way we can find out the functional relationship m a x. Let this is some function or this one by function m a x. So, another function of m a x. So, this way we can find out the ratio of the properties any properties p, t, rho, v after the shock to that before the shock in terms of the Mach number m a x. Now, one important thing is the stagnation pressure p o y and p o x. Now, see in a shock p o y and p o x are not maintained same. This is because shock is an irreversible process, friction is there. So, stagnation pressures are not same. Let us, so this is the measure of the irreversibility, measure of irreversibility, irreversibility. Now, before going for a routine evaluation of this, you must know this thing that in a flow, the stagnation temperature remains constant when the flow is adiabatic because stagnation temperature is the index of the stagnation enthalpy, all right? Because in a perfect gas, when there is no heat transfer in adiabatic flow, the stagnation enthalpy remains constant, total energy, enthalpy plus the kinetic energy. And in case of an ideal gas, the enthalpy can be expressed as Cp into T. So, therefore, Cp into T plus V square by 2 is known as the stagnation enthalpy. That means Cp T0, that is H0. So, stagnation temperature is fixed provided there is no energy added or energy taken out. But stagnation pressure will not be same. Stagnation pressure by definition is the pressure which could be reached if the flow is decelerated or comes to the stagnation condition isentropically without friction. That means the entire kinetic energy is converted only in the pressure energy. Understand? Only in the pressure energy, not in the enthalpy through the internal energy. That is a very useful concept I think in fluid mechanics also you know. That is why in energy conservation, whether friction is there or not, there is no loss, total energy remains same. But difference is that when friction is there, some part is converted into intermolecular energy. But in inviscid flow or isentropic flow, without heat transfer, the stagnation pressure remains same. That means there is no degradation in the intermolecular energy. That means the entire kinetic energy becomes zero when it comes to stagnation test, the entire kinetic energy is converted only to the pressure energy. And that pressure is known as the stagnation pressure. So, stagnation pressure will be equal when the flow will be frictionless. But for any natural flow, when the flow is brought to rest, that is the stagnation condition, the pressure there is not exactly the stagnation pressure by its definition. Okay. So, therefore, you see the ratio of the stagnation pressure in any flow is the measure of the irreversibility. That means, its departure from 1 is the measure of the irreversibility. Let us find out P O Y by P O X. The Routine procedure is very simple. We can express in terms of their local values and Px by Pox. And we know Poy by Py, Px by Pox. That means the ratio of the stagnation properties to the local properties in case of pressure will be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a square gamma by gamma minus 1. And P y by P x also, this ratio also we have deduced in terms of the Mach number. That means, we know this P y by P x. That means, P y by P x just now I derived. That means, P y by P x is this. So, we can replace P y by P x in terms of the M a x, P o y by P y in terms of the M a y and P x by P o x in terms of the M a x. 
and this m a y is again substituted in terms of m x. So, finally, we get an expression only in terms of m a x like this, this is a big expression. Again, I am telling you do not have to remember this, only thing is that you will have to remember the way it is being deduced. 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x s square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. Well, I think is equal to here, then divided by 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m a x s square minus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 whole to the power 1 by gamma minus 1. So, this is the relationship between P O y and P O x and we can see the value of P O y by P x is not unity that means, it is different from 1. So, stagnation pressure and we can prove that P O y is less than P O x when M A x is greater than 1. That means, this is because of the friction when m x is greater than 1, that means supersonic flow is changed to subsonic flow through a process shock where P O y is less than P O x. That means, it is the effect of friction that the stagnation pressure is lower than the initial stagnation pressure. Now, after this, we are interested to find out what is the change of S entropy. Let specific entropy small s, we are interested in that, what is the change of entropy. Earlier in HS plane, we have recognized that for a shock to occur, the entropy has to increase according to second law of thermodynamics. So, what is the value of this? So, routine calculation starts from the thermodynamic property relation T d s is d h minus V d p. For a perfect gas, we can write T d s, d h is C p d t and V is, what is V? R by P, uh, well V is P V is equal to R T, R T by P D P. So, therefore, D S is equal to very simple that you have already learned in your basic thermodynamics R D P by P. So, now the job is to integrate only D S from x to y, this upstream to downstream section. So, C P D T by T x to y minus integral, we can take r outside the characteristic gas constant which is constant. So, we can take outside the integral. Now, therefore, we can write s y minus s x is simply C p ln T y by T x minus r ln P y by P x. Now, this r can be written with this formula C p you know is equal to gamma by gamma minus 1 into r. That means, r is equal to gamma minus 1 by gamma all right into C p. So, if I replace this value of r here and take C p common that is ln then it becomes ln T y by T x and then this coefficient can go as a power here that means, P y by P x, it is a minus. So, ln x minus ln y as ln x by y using this formula to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, I can write this gamma minus 1 by gamma C p, C p is coming common. So, ln T y by T x minus ln P y by P x rest gamma minus 1 by gamma this comes. So, this is the S y minus S x. Now, this can also be written in terms of the stagnation properties and it is very simple that we can use the stagnation properties. This can be straight away written as, let me write it again, otherwise there will be problem, S y minus S x is equal to C p ln T y by T x, well divided by P y by P x to the power gamma minus 1. This can be straight away written C p ln T o y by T o x divided by P 
POY by POX to the power. Now you may say, sir, why are you writing like this? As if it appears, the ratio of the properties is equal to the ratio of their stagnation properties. It is not so, but by the relationship, it appears so. That means, if you write TOY by TY, that is, is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 MAY square. Similarly, if you write TOX by TX is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 MAX square. That means, the ratio TY by TX is not equal to the ratio TOX by TOY by TOX, but they will carry the ratio between these two. But at the same time, the POY by PY, if you do this calculation, it will be obvious immediate MAY square to the power just the reciprocal of it, gamma by gamma minus 1. And similarly, POX by PX will be the same quantity with Mach number X square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. So, with the help of these four equations, if you express TY by TX, the ratio of the temperatures in terms of their stagnation temperatures and the ratio of the pressures in terms of their stagnation pressures, you will see this gamma minus 1, gamma, gamma by. So, this ratio of these two quantities will cancel from the numerator and denominator. So, that ultimately it is very interesting that the same ratio, that means the variables in terms of the local properties can be just changed or substituted in terms of the stagnation properties. So, that we can express this. Now, here one thing is that TOY is equal to TOX. So, this is 1 in case of shock because it is an adiabatic condition, there is no energy is added or extracted. So, therefore, the stagnation temperatures are same, that is 1. That means minus C P L N P O Y by P O X to the power gamma minus 1. Now, if I take this thing here in the coefficient, then it can be written and again replaced it by R L N P O Y by P O so, one simple expression that S y minus S x by R, it is a non-dimensional quantity this side L n. Now, since P o y is already we have proved that P o y is less than P o x. So, therefore, this is always greater than 0, that entropy is always increased. All right. Now, a very routine and very tedious calculations one can make again to have the same conventional things that the entropy change in terms of the Mach number that as a function of upstream Mach number what he has to do he has to substitute this big expression of POY by POX in terms of the Mach number somewhere earlier we have deduced it that POY by POX in terms of the well in terms of the Mach number MAX if we do that we ultimately get the expression S O Y that means we grade the expression S Y minus S X. I think you have understood that already we have deduced this. So, this is very interesting equation in very simplified form, but if we want to express in terms of Mach number at the upstream section M X, then we have to substitute this ratio as a function of M X which we have deduced earlier and final result is that S Y minus S X by R is equal to it is a very big one gamma by gamma minus 1. There is no reason to remember it, but you must know this gamma plus 1 <coughs> m a x a square plus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 plus 1 by gamma minus 1 ln well 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m a x s square minus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1. Now, usual convention is to draw, now we can show in figure the variation of entropy change s y minus s x by r with Mach number m a x. Now, it has been proved already that p o y is less than P o x. So, S y minus S x is positive greater than, uh, well greater than 0, I am sorry greater than 0. 
So, greater than 0, that means entropy increases greater than 0, it is not greater than 1, greater than 0. So, this can be expressed in terms of the mx, now we can plot it. So, if you take a value of gamma between 1 to 1.67, let us consider a value, any value 1.44 for diatomic gases, then we can plot this and we will see that, well, so this is the 1 Mach number, let this increase as 3 like that in a supersonic region. This is supersonic, super, supersonic, and this is subsonic. Well, subsonic. So we will see the Mach number if I, this entropy is going like this. So therefore, this is an impossible. This is the possible shock waves, where the entropy increases. Possible shocks. Possible shocks. And this is the impossible region. That means where the Sy minus Sx are negative. That means the possible shocks corresponding to an upstream Mach number which is greater than 1. But for an upstream Mach number which is less than 1, a process will reduce the entropy in an adiabatic flow which is violating the second law of thermodynamics. Mathematically, we can see that there is an asymptotic approach to the minus infinity when the Mach number reaches a particular value in the subsonic range. This can be found out from this expression. Here you see that this argument becomes 0, implying an infinite value for this in the negative axis. Then we can find that a particular value of m a x square which becomes equal to gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma plus 1. All right? So, that value of m a x square makes this argument 0. So, this argument 0, this is the ln, so therefore this becomes. So, a particular value of ma, this becomes, that this part of the curve is impossible, impossible. This part of the curve is impossible, all right. So, this is the change in entropy. Now, we just show at the end the, come to this, to have an idea of stagnation, pressure, temperature. Let us draw the phenoline in Ts diagram. We know that we drew phenoline earlier in Hs diagram. In a perfect gas, H is equal to Cpt. For a calorically perfect gas, Cp is constant. So, H and T are same. That means, they are just changed with a scale factor. So, the same graph we can draw in Ts diagram with the same qualitative picture like this. So, this is phenoline, all right. So, this is phenoline this is phenoline, phenoline. So, if you recall the Rayleigh line, which is like this, this, this is the Rayleigh line, this is the Rayleigh line. And the intersection between the phenoline and the Rayleigh line is the shock. That means, this is the direction of the shock. That means, the shock takes place in such a way that there is a change in entropy. So, this is the region where Mach is greater than 1, Ma, that means supersonic. This is the region where Mach is less than 1. So, this is Rayleigh line. I must draw that this is Rayleigh line. I must write R A Y L E I G H Rayleigh line. All right. So, therefore, we see that these are the intersection. Now, here you one thing is very clear that this is the upstream side and this is the downstream side. That means, this is the x and this is the y. We have already discussed the shock wave, the upstream and downstream points must match both the Rayleigh line conditions and phenoline conditions. So, this is the direction of the shock. So, shock takes place in these directions from x to y. Now, therefore, we see that in a shock, the stagnation temperature is fixed, that is Tox, because this is adiabatic, is equal to Toy. That means, if I draw an isentropic line from here, vertical line, so this cuts here, the constant pressure lines in Ts diagram like this, these are the constant pressure line for a gas, for example, the perfect gas here. So, this is the Pox. But now, this state, if I draw an isentropic line, if I, that means, if I draw an isentropic line from x, this cuts the isentropic temperature corresponding to this state and this point corresponds to a particular constant pressure line, 
which physically signifies the stagnation pressure corresponding to this state. That means, the stagnation pressure corresponding to the pressure at this state. Similarly, this is valid for any state. That state Y, it has got a pressure P Y and it has got a temperature T Y and it has got a stagnation temperature T O Y. If X and Y are the points in an adiabatic flow, that means between these two points, no energy is added or extracted. That means the isentropic uh, stagnation temperature is same. That means if I draw the isentropic line, and if we just come up to the same stagnation temperature because TOX is TOI, so we come up to this point, and the constant pressure line passing through this point will indicate the stagnation pressure corresponding to this point. Since this point is right of this, it is obvious geometrically also that means the entropy has increased for this point from this point, then a isentropic that a vertical line will cut the same horizontal line to a point where the constant pressure line P O i which is less than P O i. That means this is the difference in the stagnation pressure. Stagnation pressure is decreased where the stagnation temperature remains same. So, this is precisely the graphical representation of the shock. This is the phenoline flow, this is the Rayleigh line flow. Again, I am telling this curve is the phenoline flow, that means the flow without heat transfer but with friction and the steady state condition, that is same mass flow. And this is the Rayleigh line where the flow takes place without friction but in general heat transfer is there. And the steady state mass flow condition is maintained that the same mass flow, but the shock occurs in such a way that upstream and downstream both satisfies the conditions of no heat transfer, conditions of no heat transfer, conditions of no friction and also the steady state condition. It is very important and there lies the concept that the shock is such that interior details of the shock friction is there. Shock is a frictional process, a natural process which increases the entropy. But upstream and downstream of the shock refers to the conditions that no energy is added and ultimately the friction is taken to be negligible in a sense that when you take the momentum equation that across the shock wave the control volume is so thin that we have neglected the momentum, neglected the frictional effect. So, this is an approximation, but it is a very good approximation. So, that equality of impulse functions are valid. So, therefore, the both the upstream and downstream sections corresponds to the intersect corresponds to both the phenoline and Rayleigh line conditions. So, therefore, they correspond to the intersections of Rayleigh line and phenoline points. So, therefore, again coming to this picture, you see, so these are the two points. So, this has to be upstream, this has to be downstream because of the second law. And this figure shows you the corresponding stagnation pressure where the stagnation temperature remains same. All right. I think uh, okay. Any question? Question? Okay. Thank you.